In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold an origami rose designed by Jordi Adel. It's inspired by a rose designed by Toshikatsu Kawasaki, like just about any origami rose that uses a twist fold base. Now Jordi made a video on how to fold um, this rose already, but it's in Catalan and Jordi kindly offered me to make an English version of the video. Um, I'll fold uh, a rose from a square sheet of paper that has a side length of 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters or 6 inches by 6 inches. The resulting rows will then have a diameter of about 5 to 5.5 centimeters or 2 to 2 um, and an eighth of an inch or, and it will be uh, about 3 to 3.5 three centimeters high or about 1 um, and a quarter to 1 three eighths of an inch. Now, the exact size uh, depends on how you shape the rows, so um, that's why I can't give quite exact values. As you can see, this rose I folded from um, um, marbled paper. It's very soft, it wasn't um, as easy to fold, but I think it gives a quite beautiful result. But I also wanted to show you that you can fold this from simple printer paper, as I did here, and it still gives a very beautiful result. Although I do think a splash of color does help. Now, if you use paper that has um, color on one side only and is white on the other, then if you want a colored rose, you should start with the white side up. Then we're going to take this edge and bring it to the top edge to fold the paper in half. Unfold, rotate, and repeat. Unfold, flip the paper over, and now fold point to point to crease the diagonal. Unfold, rotate, and repeat. Now once you have that, we're going to keep that crease folded and now push from both sides to get this kind of four-pointed star and then take two flaps to one side and two flaps to the other side. Then going, we're going to lay the model down Take this bottom point and bring it to that top point to just mark in the center so that we know where the halfway point is. Then again we're going to take that top point and bring it to that marking and again just pinch in the center so that we know where the uh, quarter point is. And then we're going to take this point, bring it to that quarter mark and then crease. I'm going to use my thumbnail, like this wide section, to make a very strong crease. Then, if you unfold the model, you can see that you have a small square in the center. Now we want to have that square kind of popping up, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to always pinch these folds kind of pinching the paper together so that they pop up. Um, they're mountain folds when you pinch them like this. And you go around once and then you can kind of see that the square pops up. But before we return to this phase we're actually going to lie it flat again and we're going to first um, add some extra creases. They're going to start in the points of this small um, square and then they're going to extend to just one side. So for this I'm first going to bend the paper up until I can kind of see that small square and then I'm going to pinch the paper so that um, the crease that forms exactly starts in that small point. You should try to get this as precise as possible but if you're like slightly off it will be okay still. Then I'm going to take this top point here and align it with that diagonal crease line. And then I'm just going to crease to the left and 
unfold. Then rotate and repeat the same step. Again, pinch to get exactly that spot, align and then crease to the left. And rotate, pinch, align and crease to the left. And one final time, rotate, then pinch, align and crease to the left and unfold. Now we're again going to return to that um, to that square popping up by just uh, always grabbing the model kind of on these diagonals that go through the point. And then we're going to push with the finger inside to push that together like that. And then we're going to go along this crease, which we just made, and that crease, to lie the model flat. So I'm first going to go inside here, then open up one side and open up the other side. And then we have a twist fold all done. Then we're going to flip the model over. And now we're going to add some further creases and then we're almost done really. So we're going to take these um, folded edges right here and align them with the folded edges that are kind of um, in the counterclockwise direction. For this I'm first going to go through once and kind of um, push my uh, little finger in here so that um, it loosens up a little bit. And the last one. Then I'm just kind of going to try and tilt the paper up a little bit and you can try and push on this small square to get that. And then I'm going to take just that folded edge, so I'm not taking this lower layer, just the top um, edge, and I'm going to bend it over to the other folded edge. And then I'm going to align it so that um, this edge aligns with that edge, and this edge aligns with that edge. Just like that. And then we're going to add a crease by pushing the paper together. And try to really fix the paper so that it doesn't drift while you're adding the crease. And then we continue with the next one. Again, align edge to edge both here and there, and push to crease. And the next one. And one final time. There we go. Now we want to collapse all of these at once. So I'm going to take two that are kind of opposite of each other and just push and it's almost automatically going to kind of twist into this tube. And then I'm going to take the other two and again twist it so that that tube forms even more. And then you can take all of these flaps and just wrap them around like that. And then you have this tube. Can you see that? And then perhaps in the center you kind of want to straighten everything out a little bit by pushing that square flat. And maybe even kind of going around pressing all of this together. At this point uh, I think it's nice to already start shaping a little bit. Um, it's good to use a tool and one tool that I think pretty much everyone has is a pen. Um, you should kind of not have uh, the tip showing because you don't want to draw on the model. And the first thing I do is I kind of go into that center and just push it down a little bit to get this started. And then I kind of go along one of these sections and just roll around to get a soft curve. And then I go to the next one and again roll it around to get a soft curve. And the next one kind of pushing inside 
and then pushing that to get a nice and round shape. And the final one. It's a nicer, rounder shape. So the center is much more open now and also this um, squarish feel that the flower had before is um, gone a little. So that's kind of a small shaping step already. Now we're going to form the petals. For this we're going to um, always take a look at one of these flaps here. You'll have four of them. So I'm going to take um, this layer. I'm going to take this edge and fold it over to that folded edge. And then we're going to crease here. You'll have a crease here already and along that crease, but this time on both layers, you can see there's one layer here and one there, on both layers we're going to fold it behind. And then that flap is done. I'm going to move on to the next one. Again, fold in half. And then fold the triangle to the back. And again, the next flap. Fold in half. Try to kind of not have this paper drift apart by kind of fixing it with the finger. Fold in half and fold behind. And one final time, this flap here, fold in half, and then fold that behind. Now we want to kind of get that tube shape back, just push it together a little bit and maybe push these small points so that we can now oh see this one unfolded we're just going to push that triangle back again not a problem at all so that now we can lock kind of the base now to form the base of the rows I'm going to take one of these tips and push it inside if you push it in farther it's going to be a shorter rose if you don't push it in as far, it's going to be a taller rose. I like quite short roses, so I'm going to push this inside and I'm going to take the next tip and push that on top and I'm going clockwise. Then I'm going to take the next tip and push it inside. And then I'm going to take the last one and push it inside. Now I want these to interlock, so the last point I kind of have to get into can you see that gap right there? And I have to push it right in there. So I'm pushing it and I'm bending it a little bit so that I can go inside that section and then push it inside. And then the rose is locked. It's as easy as that. Now uh, we're just going to do some final shaping. It's up to your taste what you do, but um, I think that um, very little shaping already gives a beautiful result. So here's what um, I do and what Jordi suggests. You kind of go into these petals right here and you have a crease right here and you basically just um, <laughs> want to push that crease flat and maybe extend it a little bit. There you go. And if your base unfolds, you know, just check and refold it. What also helps is you can kind of make small creases here if you want. Then uh, the locking is going to hold a bit better. Then again, we're going to go inside and push this flat and maybe extend it a little bit to the top. This one I already did. And then the next one, always pushing flat, extending a little bit. And then on the fourth final petal. And then your origami rose, designed by Jordi Adele, is all done. I think it's a beautiful model. 
um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you want to give it to someone you really like as a small gift, for example, for Valentine's Day or Mother's Day or just about any day because small gifts are always something that we should give to the ones we love. Happy folding!